Now this corollary itself has an immediate corollary. Let the set G together with the binary operation star be a group. Then the left and right cancellation laws hold. That is, if A star B is equal to A star C, then B is equal to C. And if B star A is equal to C star A, then B is equal to C. So proof. First statement, suppose that A star B is equal to A star C. Now since A is an element in the underlying set G, where G is a group under the binary operation star, there exists a unique inverse for that element, also in the group such that A star A inverse is the same as A inverse star A which is the identity. And so A inverse star of the quantity, A star B, is equal to A inverse star of the quantity, A star C. Now since the operation star is associative over the underlying set G, we can regroup the term so that we have the quantity A inverse star A star B is equal to the quantity A inverse star A star C so that identity star B is equal to identity star C or B is equal to C. Second statement, suppose that B star A is equal to C star A, then the quantity B star A star A inverse is equal to the quantity C star A star A inverse. And once again, as the operation star is associative over the entire uh, underlying set G, we can regroup the terms so that we have B star the quantity, A star A inverse is equal to C star the quantity, A star A inverse, so that B star identity is equal to C star identity, or simply B is equal to C. Okay, so this uh, corollary itself has uh, an immediate corollary. But this is a very important fact about groups, and so we will state it as a theorem. Let the set G together with the binary operation star be a group. And let the elements A and B be two elements in the underlying set G. Then the equations. A star X equals B and Y star A equals B. These equations have unique solutions X and Y which are also in the set G. So proof First, we will show that the equation A star X equals B has at least one solution. Now, since A is an element 
in the underlying set G, there exists a unique inverse for that element also in the set G, such that A star A inverse is the same as A inverse star A, which is the identity. Now since A inverse and the element B are both elements in the underlying set, the uh, operation when we perform the operation with A inverse and the element B, that is once again an element in the underlying set. So notice that A star the quantity, A inverse star B, is the same as the quantity a star A inverse star B, since the operation is associative, and this is identity star B, or simply B, and so X equals A inverse star B is A solution of the equation A star X equals B, where X is an element in the underlying set G. So now we show that the solution is unique so suppose that X of 1 and X of 2 are both solutions to the equation a star x equals b so that a star x of 1 is equal to b and a star x of 2 is equal to b then a star x of 1 is equal to a star x of 2 and since the left cancellation law holds we have that x of 1 is equal to x of 2 and hence the solution x equals a inverse star b is unique now similarly B star A inverse is an element in the underlying set G since both the element B and A inverse is in the set. Notice that the quantity B star A inverse star A is the same as B star the quantity A inverse star A since the operation is associative and this is B star identity, which is simply B. And hence Y equals B star A inverse is A solution to the equation Y star A equals B, where this element Y is in the underlying set G. Now suppose that y sub 1 and y sub 2 are both solutions to the equation y star a is equal to b so that y sub 1 star a is equal to b and y sub 2 star a is equal to b then y sub 1 star a is equal to y sub 2 star a and since the right cancellation law holds we have that y sub 1 is equal to y sub 2 that are they are the same element and hence the solution y equals b star a inverse is unique
Okay, so new definition. Let G, together with a binary operation star, be a group. In the equation, a star x to the power of n equals b, the term x to the power of n is a monomial of degree n where x to the power of n is x star x and so on and star x so that we perform the operation star on the element x n times a linear equation in the group consisting of the set G together with the binary operation star is an equation which contains a monomial of degree 1 And in parentheses, I'll say, and none higher. But notice that in a group, there is only one operation. And so we only uh, have a single monom monomial. Uh, we need two operations in order to have a polynomial, which is uh, generally considered a sum of monomials. But a linear equation in a group is an equation that has a monomial of degree 1 and none higher. So notice that the previous theorem states that all linear equations with coefficients in the group have a unique solution also in the group. Now, in an additive group, consisting of an underlying set G together with some notion of addition, the monomial x to the power of n, which is x plus x, and so on, so that we take the sum of the element x with itself in times is generally denoted in times x, but uh, notice that in an additive group the operation is some notion of addition and so uh, when we use the notation n times x, what we mean is the monomial x to the power of n, which is performing the operation uh, on the underlying element n times. 
So as an example, all linear equations of the form a plus x equals b and y plus a equals b where a and b are integers these equations have unique solutions in the group consisting of the integers under addition namely x is the additive inverse of a plus b and y is b plus the additive inverse of a now consider the equation two x equals four in the group consisting of the integers under addition the monomial two x which is x plus x is a monomial of degree 2 or is degree 2 and so the equation 2x equals 4 is not linear in the group consisting of the integers under addition so to solve this equation we can first note that x plus x is equal to 2 plus 2 so that the equation states that the sum of an integer with itself is equal to the sum of the integer 2 with itself and we can, we can conclude that the uh, integer x must be the integer 2 but another way which is much more in line with the idea of factoring uh, a quadratic uh, into linear terms is to re rewrite the equation so that we have x minus 2 is equal to negative x plus 2 so that x minus 2 is equal to the negative of x minus 2 now in the integers under addition an integer is equal to its additive inverse only if that integer is the additive inverse itself, or rather the additive identity itself, 0. And so we can conclude that the integer which is x minus 2 must be equal to 0. In other words, we have now reduced uh, the problem to a linear equation in the integers uh, under addition. And so x minus 2 is equal to 0. This is a linear equation in the group. And it has a solution, namely x equals 2. So as an exercise, show that the equation 2x equals 3 has no solution in the group consisting of the integers under addition. Okay, so we'll end here for today. Next time, we will look at commutative groups, which we call Abelian groups, and we will we'll begin to look at translation and permutation groups. So I hope you have enjoyed the second lecture. Thanks for watching.